Okay class, there we're in section 2.1, find square roots and compare real numbers. 2.1, find square roots and compare real numbers. Before, you found squares of numbers and compared rational numbers. Now, you will find square roots and compare real numbers. Key vocabulary, square root, radicand, perfect square, irrational number, real numbers. Recall that the square of 4 is 4 squared is equal to 16. And the square of negative 4 is a negative 4 squared that also equals 16. The numbers 4 and negative 4 are called the square roots of 16. In this lesson, you will find the square roots of non-negative numbers. Key concept, square root of a number, words. If b squared is equal to a, then b is the square root of a. Example, 3 squared is equal to 9. And negative 3 squared is equal to 9. So 3 and negative 3 are square roots of 9. All positive real numbers have two square roots. A positive square root, or principal square root, and a negative square root. A square root is written with the symbol that is the square root symbol. The number or expression inside the radicals symbol is the radicand. Radical and radicand. Once again, radical symbol, that's the square root, and the radicand is what's up under the square root symbol. Zero has only one square root. And that's zero. Negative real numbers do not have real square roots because the square root of every real number is is either positive or zero. Example one, find square roots. Evaluate the expression a plus or minus. That's how that symbol is read. Plus or minus the square root of 36. The positive and negative square root of 36 are 6 and negative 6. In, the, in other words, 6 times 6 is 36, and a negative 6 times 6 is also, excuse me, a negative 6 times a negative 6 is also 36. B. The square root of 49 is equal to 7. The positive square root of 49 is 7. C. Negative square root of 4. So what you do here first is you compute the square root of 4, which is 2, and that negative sign comes along for the right. So the negative square root of 4 is equal to a negative 2. Once again, the symbol plus or minus is read as plus or minus and refers to both the positive square root and the negative square root. Perfect squares. The square of an integer is called a perfect square, as shown in example 1. The square root of a perfect square is an integer. As you will see in example 2, you need to approximate a square root if the radicand is a whole number and is not a perfect square. Example 2. Approximate a square root. Furniture. The top of a folding table is a square whose area is 945 square inches. Approximate the side length of the tabletop to the nearest inch. Solution. You need to find the side length S of the tabletop such that S squared is equal to 945. This means that S is a positive square root of 945. You can use a table to determine whether 945 is a perfect square root. Number 28. 28 squared, 784. Uh, 29. 29 squared, 841. 30 squared, 900. 31 squared is 961. And 32 squared is 1024. So after taking these numbers in a row and squaring them, you see that no number came out to be 945. That tells you that 945 is not a perfect square. Once again, as shown in the table, 945 is not a perfect square. 
the greatest perfect square less than 945 is 900. And that goes to number 30. The least perfect square greater than 945 is 961. And that's a, that comes from 31. So now, write a compound inequality that compares 945 with both 900 and 961. And what you'll find out is that 945 is greater than 900, but 945 is less than 961. Now I'm reading this from the inside out, inside out, inside out, inside out. 945 is greater than 900. 945 is less than 961. Take positive square root of each number. So the square root of 900 is 30. We know that from the table. The square root of 961 is 31. We also know that from the table. So now find square root of each perfect square. So we did that. So 30. 31. So then we know then that the square root of 945 is somewhere between 30 and 31. So what we do is the average of 30 and 31 is 30.5 and 30.5 squared is equal to 930.25 because 945 is greater than 930.25 the square root of 945 is closer to 31 than to 30. The side length of the tabletop is about 31 inches. Using a calculator. In example 2, you can use a calculator to obtain a better approximation of the side length of the tabletop. You press the second key on your graphing calculator and it's going to give you the square root symbol. And then you, after you put in the square root symbol, you put in 945 and then press the enter key. The value shown can be rounded to the nearest hundredth. So 30.74 or to the nearest tenth, 30.7. In either case, the length is closer to 31 than it is to 30. All right, to help those out who may be a tad bit confused on how um, they're doing the approximation when the square root is not perfect, we're going to work with some simpler numbers. For example, let's say we want to find the square root of 8. All we would do is we would look for a perfect square lower than 8 and a perfect square higher than 8. A perfect square lower than 8 would be the square root of 4. A perfect square that's higher than 8 would be the square root of 9. So then we say what's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 9? 3. So we know that the square root of 8 has to be between 2 and 3. Alright now notice 8 is closer to 9 than it is to 4. So we know then that the square root of 8 has to be something like 2.5 at a minimum, but we, we can say 2.5, 2.6 because we're approximating 2.7, um, 2.8, uh, 2.9. All right. Now, since I know it's closer to 9, it's only one digit away from 9, I'm going to say that the square root is approximately 2.9. All right, so that's all you're really doing there. Real numbers. The set of real numbers is a set of all rational and irrational numbers, as illustrated in the Venn diagram below. Every point on the real number line represents a real number. So, your system is real numbers... Real numbers are composed of rational numbers and irrational numbers. Real numbers are composed of rational numbers and irrational numbers. Types of rational numbers would be integers, negative 1, negative 4, negative 1, negative 27. Whole numbers, whole numbers beginning with the counting number 0. All right. Over here to give you one additional type of number. If you exclude zero from the whole numbers, the resulting set is called natural numbers. So once again, rational numbers would be integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. Natural numbers begin with number one. Whole numbers begin with number zero. And then over here we have irrational numbers. 
Also notice that rational numbers repeat 0.3333. Rational numbers terminate, in this case 0, 0 0.75. Nothing's after that, so they terminate. Also notice rational numbers can be expressed as a fraction. 3 over 4, negative 1 over 3. Notice that irrational numbers, they continue on. They do not repeat. They continue on. They do not repeat. They continue on. They do not repeat. And notice they do not terminate. Dot, 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 dot. That means that, numbers, that the numbers are keep on going. Example three, classify numbers. Tell whether each of the following numbers is a real number, a rational number, an irrational number, an integer, or a whole number. Square root of 24, the square root of 100, and the negative square root of 81. Number, square root of 24. Is it a real number? Yes. Is it a rational number? No. Is it an irrational number? Yes. Is it an integer? No. Is it a whole number? No. Now, why is it a real number? Because real numbers can be rational or irrational. All right. Is it a rational number? No. Why? Because when you do the square root of a number, if it is not a perfect square, it is automatically irrational. All right. And if it's irrational, can't be an integer and it definitely can't be a whole number. The square root of 100. Is it a real number? Yes. Is it a rational number? Yes. Is it irrational? No. Is it an integer? Yes. Is it a whole number? Yes. The square root of 100 is 10. Since that makes it a perfect square, that means it would definitely be a um, rational number. All right, let's look at the square root of 81, the negative square root of 81. Is it real? Yes. Is it rational? Yes. Is it irrational? No. Is it an integer? Yes, because the square root of 81 is 9, so it's going to be negative, a negative 9. And um, is it a whole number? No. There's no there because it's going to be a negative 9, and whole numbers are positive. Example 4. Graph and order real numbers. Order the numbers from least to greatest. 4 thirds, a negative square root of 5, the square root of 13, a negative 2.5, and the square root of 9. Begin by graphing the numbers on a number line. So you make a number line. Alright, now read the numbers from left to right after you've ordered them. Okay, so a negative 2.5 will sit here. The square root of, excuse me, the negative square root of 5 is equal to a negative 2.24, so that's there. 4 thirds is really saying 1 and 1 third, so that's right there. The square root of 9 is 3, that's there. And the square root of 13 is approximately 3.61, and that's going to be right there. So when you put them in order from least, least to greatest, you got a negative 2.5, the negative square root of 5, 4 over 3, square root of 9, and a square root of 13. Conditional statements. A conditional statement not in if-then form can be written in that form. Example 5. Rewrite a conditional statement in if-then form. Rewrite the given conditional statements in if-then form. Tell rather the statement is true or false. If it is false, give a counterexample. Solution. Given, no fractions are irrational numbers. If then form, if a number is a fraction, then it is not an irrational number. The statement is true. Given, all real numbers are rational numbers. If then form, if a number is a real number, then it is a rational number. The statement is false. For example, the square root of 2 is a real number but not a rational number. Alright and that concludes today's lesson.